Back to home. Rose's POV. The day when I got to know about Ryan's true identity, my heart got shattered into pieces. When I got to know that the man who sat beside me was the mysterious CEO, I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to run away from there and I did so. I never thought that Fiona and Martin would follow me as my true friends. For some reason I knew that Ryan would come searching for me. I just wanted to hide from him. Martin did suggest that I go to his hometown where his parents would help me. But I didn't want to bother anyone. I just wanted to be home, and the only home I had was the orphanage. I didn't have any passport when I came here, but got one after my graduation. Mrs. Collins helped me to get the passport as she allowed me to give her name in the place of the guardian and her address as my address. I thought of going back to her, but I wanted to run away from Ryan. He really broke my heart. I didn't give the address of the orphanage, even when Fiona insisted on me. When I got back the orphanage authorities were not ready to take me back without giving them the proof of my virginity. After giving them the proof they wanted, they asked me to sign a consent letter. While coming here, I never thought of becoming a nun. After signing the consent letter, I prayed daily for a miracle to happen. It's been 16 days in the convent and suddenly the miracle happened. Ryan came for me. After hearing everything about his family and why he had hidden the truth, I felt really bad for him. I even felt guilty for running away and making him worried for me. As the saying goes, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. The Mother Superior came to give me the news of how I could escape from here. Right now I am flying to New York with Ryan to meet his parents. Yesterday after learning about his loving family, my craving to find my family increased. The condition was just an excuse to make Ryan more eager. But after he left my room, I thought about it and for the first time, I wanted to be selfish. I have already decided what the condition should be but Ryan's care for me is pulling me back. At last somehow I told him my dream of finding my family. I didn't say it is a condition but as a request. I hope he will help me. I looked at him eagerly for his reply. He kept silent for a long time as if lost in thoughts. My dear Rose, the world has advanced a lot in the last 15 years. It's not the same world when you were five years old. In this world of technology, it won't be that difficult to find your family. I am sure your parents will also be searching for you. In that case, we can find them with the help of your DNA. Once we get back to California, I promise to find your family. His words made me want to hug him, and I couldn't stop myself. I just did not hug him but kissed him, making other passengers notice us. For the rest of the journey, I couldn't look him straight in the eye. We landed in New York by 4.30. Since the surgery was fixed for six pre-cum, we still had time to meet his father. Ryan had told me that bone marrow had been already taken from Martin. I did hear about the bone marrow transplant but I never knew the procedures. I hope the surgery will be a success. Ryan, how long will it take for the surgery to finish? I asked. Rose, you are really naive. Bone marrow transplant is not a surgery. It's a procedure similar to blood transfusion. There won't be any cuts or stitches. Normally it takes from one to two hours. I am sure dad will recover. I'm actually worried about Martin because he chose to do the bone marrow harvesting rather than a pharisis. He said, What's the difference between bone marrow harvesting and a pharisis? I asked. In a pharisis, the donor will be connected to a special cell separation machine. 
In this process a needle will be inserted in the arm veins of both the hands. Blood will be taken from one arm, which is circulated through the machine. The machine separates the stem cells and returns the remaining blood back through the needle connected on the other arm. In this process, the donor will have to go through several sessions so that they could collect enough stem cells. In the process of bone marrow harvesting, it is done in an operation theater after giving anesthesia to the donor. As far as I know a needle is placed into the soft center of the bone, which is called marrow. I have read that the donor may experience pain in the places where the needle is inserted. I can't just thank Martin in words. He has actually saved our family. Ryan explained. We were now in the cab going to the hospital. It took around 50 minutes to reach the hospital and Ryan's father was already taken to the operation theater. Martin was with Ryan's mom outside the theater. An old lady was with them, who I recognized as Ryan's grandmother, as I had seen her at the function. As soon as Martin saw me he came running and hugged me. Oh Rose, you don't have any idea how much we missed you. He said. I missed you too how are you now? I asked. I am fine and now I am so happy to see you. He said. Placing a kiss on my forehead. Ryan introduced me to his mom and grandma. They both welcomed me with a hug, even when they were tense. We didn't talk much but still I felt some connection with them. Ryan went with Martin and came back with coffee and some light food for all. I really needed it, because I haven't had anything since morning. We were in such a hurry to catch the flight that we didn't have anything on the way. Even after reaching New York, we couldn't stop anywhere to have something because Ryan wanted to see his father before going inside the theater. But still we were not able to make it. I had coffee and ate two sandwiches. I was so immersed in my food that I didn't see others watching me. I am sorry, I haven't had anything since last night. I tried to justify my action. What, Ryan brought you here making you starve? His mom jumped up from her seat. Mom, it's not like that I can explain. Ryan tried to say, but his mom was not ready to hear him. You can't justify your action, Ryan. What you did is wrong. Grandma backed his mom. No, Mrs. Dumont. It's not like that we were in such a hurry to get here, that we didn't have the time I am now full. I said, Rose, it's not good to hide his faults. He should have taken you to a restaurant as soon as you landed here. His mom said, They are really so sweet. I will be lucky to be a part of their family. It took almost two hours to complete the procedure. The doctors allowed only the family members to see him through a glass window, as he was still unconscious. I really wanted to meet him, and also to apologize for all the havoc I created. Martin had to stay in the hospital for another day. He will be returning after one more week. Ryan's mom stays at the hospital itself as the bystander. Where are you going to stay? Ryan's mom asked him. Mom, we have to return back today itself. I have been absent from the business for two days, and I can't afford to take another leave. He said, Grandma, are you coming with us? He asked, No, I have taken special permission from the doctor to stay here, for the night your grandpa will be coming tomorrow. We will return together after seeing Paul. Grandma said, Okay then, we will have to leave now to catch the flight on time. Ryan said. I looked at Ryan's mom and grandma. Rose, it was because of me. Ryan didn't tell you everything please give him a chance. Ryan's mom said. I know Mrs. Dumont. I want to apologize to you for creating all the fuss without knowing the truth. I said hugging her. 
We left after bidding our goodbyes. Ryan didn't take our bags from the airport as we had to catch the flight. He had already booked the tickets for the flight at 12. I looked at the time and it's already 30 minutes past 10. We boarded the flight on time and within five and a half hours, we landed in California. DNA. Rose's POV. Where do you like to go? Can I take you to Dumont Bungalow? Ryan asked. I think it's too late to go to your place. Please drop me at my apartment. Fiona will be surprised to see me. I said. So, when will you join the Dumont Enterprise? He asked again. I haven't thought about joining back yet. I said. Then think over it and give me a reply by tomorrow. Either way I'll be waiting for you day after tomorrow at the office. Ryan said while pulling the trolley with bags. A driver was waiting with a car to receive him. While the driver loaded the trunk with the bags, Ryan opened the door for me. We sat together in the back seat. It took an hour to reach the apartment. I looked at the time. It's 20 minutes past 5 inch the morning. Fiona will be sleeping right now. I thought and my stomach grumbled at the same time. We were still in the car and Ryan heard the grumbling. I think your tummy speaks more than you do. Let's go and have something before waking up Fiona. Ryan asked the driver to take the car to any restaurant or cafe that opens early in the morning. There is a cafe near the Beach Candy Hospital. It opens by 5 in the morning. The driver replied, Great, then take us there. Ryan said. Within 15 minutes we were in front of the cafe. I ordered a caramel latte and a vegetable sandwich and Ryan ordered the same. After satisfying my tummy, we went back to my apartment. It was already 15 minutes past 6 when I pressed the bell button. Fiona opened the door with a yawn and freezed on the spot with the open mouth and wide eyes for a few seconds, and then she screamed, and I swear the neighbors would be awakened. She jumped up on me and hugged, as if she got her life back. I can't believe my eyes you are back. She started jumping up and down. Stop it or else the neighbors would come and beat us. I warned her. Ryan stood with my bags watching Fiona's actions. Fiona, I think you should be thanking me for getting her back. Ryan said. Well, I should be beating you up because you were the reason she ran away. Fiona retorted. Fiona allowed us to enter the apartment. Ryan kept my bags near the couch. Helen came out of my room, startling me. Helen came to me in an instant and hugged me. Rose, you are back. Why didn't you tell us she is coming Ryan? Helen asked Ryan. I thought of giving you both a surprise. I had told Martin not to tell you about Rose. Ryan said. What do you mean? Does Martin know that Rose is coming back? Helen asked. We went to New York to visit Dad and Mom. We have already met Martin and yes, he does know that Rose is coming back. Ryan replied. Why didn't he tell me? We were talking when I heard the calling bell. Helen said. Don't be angry at him I had warned him from telling you anything. Ryan said. When did you shift here Helen? I asked, making them startled. When? A week back both me and Fiona felt really lonely after you left. So we became a support system for each other. Now, when you have come back I will be shifting out soon. Helen said. No, please don't do that we all can stay here together. We can adjust. I opined. I have already told you Helen you can fit in my room. If you want we can take a new wardrobe, as there is plenty of space in my room. Fiona said. You both won't need to adjust, if you make some small renovation. I think you all can do without that balcony. Ryan asked. Obviously we don't need the balcony how can that solve our problem?
I asked. Fiona, do you mind if there is another door to your washroom? Ryan asked and we all looked at him puzzled. We can add the balcony with a small portion of the hall and make a small room, enough to put a single bed and a small wardrobe. If it gets renovated like that, Fiona's washroom will be connected with the new room. If a door can be installed to the washroom from the new room, then there won't be any problem with the washroom. Whoever gets in the washroom will have to lock the other door from inside. Ryan suggested. That's a great idea. I don't have any problem with sharing my washroom with Helen. Fiona said. Actually, I have a better idea. I will be using the new room. I love the view from the balcony. If it becomes a room, a window will be installed there so I could get a nice view of the sunrise every morning through my window. Until then, I will share the room with Fiona. I said, you don't have to compromise, Rose. There's no need to do all this. I will find a new place for rent. Helen said, no way. You only have two choices. Either you stay here or you move in with Martin. Fiona said. I am not going to move in with Martin before he proposes to me. Helen said. That means you are ready to tolerate him for your whole life. Ryan exclaimed. He's not that bad. It's been more than five years and he never left me. Even when I got really angry at him I love him for being loyal and now he is a perfect human being. I am proud of him for what he is doing. I am waiting for the day when he becomes my life. Helen blushed at the thought. I will send someone in the morning to see the site for renovation. Ryan said. Thank you so much Ryan, but I think we know who could help us. I have the number of the team who renovated my room. I'll call them right away. Fiona said and was about to call when Ryan said. Fiona, you can take the day off. Since I am back, I will handle the office. You just take care of Rose. Oh, so it's for Rose you are giving me a day off. Fiona pulled his legs, but instead of him my cheeks went red with blushing. Okay, then see you both tomorrow at the office. Ryan turned and left without waiting for my reply. So you are joining back? Fiona asked. I haven't decided yet since he is the boss. He wants everything according to his will. I said falling on the couch. I'll get you a coffee. Helen started to go to the kitchen. Thank you Helen, but we had coffee on the way. I just want to take a warm shower and sleep. I am really tired. I said. Okay then, take a shower and sleep well. Since Fiona has the day off. I will be leaving in an hour you can use your room. Helen said, walking to the kitchen. It's now your room I'll be comfortable with Fiona. I said and went to her room with my bags. After a warm shower, I fell asleep quickly. It was already 12 inch the noon when I woke up. Fiona was on her laptop when I came out. Hey, you are awake. Don't you have your phone? She asked. Yeah, I got it yesterday. But I don't think there will be any power left. I forgot to put it in charge before going to bed. What's the matter? I asked. Ryan has called me ten times when you were asleep. He asked you to call him back as soon as you wake up. She said, extending her phone. I will go and put my phone in the charger first. I said while taking the phone from her. I went and unpacked my bag to find the phone. When I got it, I connected it with the charger. Then I dialed Ryan's number from Fiona's phone. He took the call at the first ring. Hello Rose, did you have a nice sleep? Yeah, but why did you call me so many times? I asked. I did promise you to fulfill your dream as soon as we reach California. He said. Did you find my family? I asked with shock. You are so naive Rose. 
How can I find them without your DNA sample? He asked. I've forgotten my excitement. Then why did you call me? I asked again. I need your DNA sample to find your family be ready by two o'clock. I will come to take you to the hospital. He said and ended the call. Finally, I am seeing a ray of hope. I know this is just a sample collection, but still I can be optimistic. I went back to Fiona and told her everything until the phone call. I can't believe that you signed the consent letter to become a nun. What if Ryan didn't come? You would have to live a life you never liked. She shrieked. I was just mad at Ryan and wanted to punish him. But I never thought that I was going to sacrifice myself. I said, forget it, come on, let's have lunch Ryan will be here in an hour. You also have to get ready before that. Fiona said getting up from the couch. She had already prepared lunch and we had it together after so many days. After that I went and got ready and waited for Ryan to come. I was watching TV when he called me saying he was in front of the apartment. I looked at the time and it's two. He came on time. I went down and got into the car. He took me to his family doctor. He sent me to the lab where they collected my DNA sample. After giving the samples, we went back to see the doctor. Mr. Dumont. The results will be out in a week's time. After that we will have to match the DNA with the DNA samples already in the country. If we don't find any matches, we will have to resort to other methods. Doctor's words gave me both hope and made me despair at the same time. Back to office. Rose's POV. After coming out of the hospital. Ryan took me to the same cafe where his grandfather took me before. Gladys welcomed us at the entrance. Welcome back, young lady. I will show you the table. She said and walked in front. She took us straight upstairs, and I recognized it as her home. Why is she taking us to her home? I wondered. The stairs ended in front of a door. Gladys turned the knob and opened it. She went inside and we followed. The door opened to a small sitting room, which reminded me of medieval times. A sofa set is arranged neatly around a tea table. On the floor, there is a red carpet, which reminded me of the flying carpet from Aladdin. I looked around and found three doors. First is to our right and the other two doors on the two ends of the wall in front of us. There is a huge antique flower vase on both sides of the large window to the left. I know it's old-fashioned, but I like it this way. Everything in this house will have something to tell about me and my husband. This is our bedroom, and that used to be our children's room. Gladys said pointing towards the door at the right and the one at the, the left end of the wall in the front. Come let's have coffee, she said walking to the third door. We followed her silently. I went through the door and got a big surprise. Ryan's grandparents were sitting on the dining table in front of us. How did grandma reach here so quickly? She was in New York last night waiting for grandpa. Grandpa wasn't there until we departed. Didn't he go to visit his son? A lot of questions went through my head. Rose, because of you I have got to meet my old friend. It's been so long since we last met, Gladys said, holding Grandma's hand. When did you come back? I asked. Well, Abraham came to the hospital, just after you both left, after seeing Paul. We came back by morning flight. Bethany explained. Have you both already met her boyfriend? Gladys asked suddenly. What are you talking about Gladys? Why won't we know Ryan? Bethany asked. Bethany, I haven't introduced Ryan to her. It was with Rose that I came here. I think Rose brought Ryan here before us. Grandpa said and turned to go Gladys. Gladys, 
Meet our grandson Ryan Philip Dumont. Grandpa introduced Ryan to Gladys, who was shocked to hear the news. Abraham, did you play the role of matchmaker for your grandson? She asked. No, not at all. It was destined to be so. Actually met Rose accidentally at my office. It's true that I became a medium to get her to the Dumont Enterprise Ryan. Actually fell in love with her at the first sight. After that a lot of things happened in our lives which made them apart. To God's grace they are together again. Grandpa said. I asked Ryan to bring Rose to the cafe. I was not able to welcome her properly at the hospital. Inviting Rose to the bungalow at this time, when my son and daughter-in-law is not here, would have been inappropriate. I thought of some other place and the only place that came to my mind is your cafe. Where could I find a better place for meeting a loving couple? Bethany said, Grandpa, why didn't I know about this place? Ryan asked, Because you never wanted to be known as a Dumont. You were always away from the family. Megan had come here before and she knows well about the place and Gladys. Grandpa retorted, Okay, please take your seats. I'll be right back with my special coffee. Gladys said and went through another door. Rose, I am here to officially welcome you to our Dumont family. I know that you are hurt because of Ryan. But believe me, he is a good boy. I know you called Abraham as grandpa before you both came close. So from today on I want you to call me grandma. I was actually so lost in her words that I forgot to respond. She has actually given me an opportunity to live a life I had always dreamt of. Rose, are you all right? Ryan asked, shaking my hand. Yeah, I am all right. Actually, I wasn't expecting any of this Mrs. Dumont. I mean, Grandma, thank you for welcoming me to your family, but I still need time. I didn't know that Ryan had a family, but never thought that he would be a Dumont. I know that my background doesn't matter for any of you, but it does matter for me. I have already asked Ryan to help me to find out my family, and he agreed. I do like Ryan, and he is the first man. I have ever fallen for, I will be really lucky to get him, but I will be more than happy if that happens with the consent of my family, I know I am being selfish, but it's been my dream to find them, I even graduated and tried to get a job, just with the motive of finding my family, I tried to explain, we know everything dear, we accepted you as you are, I hope you get your family back soon. I know it's not easy to be away from your own family, and that too at such a tender age. I saw Grandpa holding her hand, as if comforting her. So have you planned anything to find out about her family? Grandpa asked. It's the world of technology and advanced science. We can easily find them using the DNA samples. I have already taken her to the hospital to give her DNA samples. Ryan replied, When will the DNA results come out? Grandma asked, Most probably it will take one to two weeks. Getting her DNA results is not important. The main task is to find the match for DNA. Ryan said, Gladys came out with five cups of coffee. She passed me one of the cups in which she had added extra cream. I have missed your coffee a lot. No one can make such incredible coffee as you. Grandma praised Gladys. I took a sip and had to agree that Grandma is right. I had never tasted such delicious coffee before. Grandma is absolutely right. Gladys, this is so delicious. It has a great aroma that will definitely make any person wanting it to drink. I praised her. The aroma is good because I use original coffee beans. Gladys said, after spending half an hour with them, I said to Ryan, I think we should leave now Fiona will be getting bored. After all she took a day off just for me. 
I didn't get enough time to spend with her as I was sleeping. You are right, we should go. I am feeling really sleepy. I just want to go back home and sleep. He said and turned to others. Okay guys we are leaving you enjoy and relieve the days you have spent together. Rose before you leave I want to say something in private. Grandpa said standing up. He motioned me to follow him and stopped Ryan, who was about to follow me. Ryan, didn't you hear that I want to say something to Rose in private? Ryan sat back with a sad face. He took me to the sitting room, and then to the room on the left. It was a small room with a four-poster bed in the middle. Rose, I know that you are not willing to join back soon. I want to make a request to you. The Dumont Enterprise need your support now. It's been hard to handle the business in the absence of Paul. You know it's my age to relax, but I have to work. Please join back, as it will be a great help for Ryan and Megan. Okay, Grandpa, I will join tomorrow itself, but please don't tell Ryan. I said and he gave me a hug before going back. I bid my farewell and followed Ryan. Ryan first dropped me at my apartment, and then went to his home. When I raised the apartment, Helen was back, and was discussing matters along with Fiona with the renovation team. One of the men, what's taking measurements of the balcony, and the portion of hall, to be included inside the room. Fiona was giving instructions. They all checked Fiona's washroom. They promised to send the estimate by night and left. After freshening up, I gave a detailed description of what happened after going with Ryan. Fiona was really happy after hearing that I am going to join back tomorrow. That calls for a celebration. Let's go out and have dinner. Fiona suggested and Helen agreed at once. I was reluctant because I had no money as literally... I had spent the last penny on the air ticket from California to Arizona. Rose, I know what you are thinking about it's on me, and you don't have to worry about anything, Fiona said. So we went out to have dinner. It was already 30 minutes past 9 when we came back. We all went straight to bed as we have to go to the office tomorrow. I went with Fiona to her room, and as she said there is plenty of room to accommodate me. She had already arranged my clothes on one side of her wardrobe. Next day I was the one to wake up first. After around two and a half weeks, I made breakfast in my kitchen. By the time I finished making bacon and scrambled eggs together with bread toast, Fiona and Helen came out of their rooms. I quickly brewed coffee for everyone and we had our breakfast. I hurried back to the room while Fiona took the cleaning of dishes on her own. I quickly got ready in my office attire. I chose to wear a black and white suit paired with a black stilettos. I did a nude makeup up and finished it with some lip gloss. We left for the office in time, hoping to surprise Ryan. But he surprised me instead. Welcome back to the Dumont Enterprise. Ryan stood at the doorway to the CEO's office with a bouquet of white lilies. He took me inside and introduced me to everyone. Then he took me to a cabin nearby. I saw my name outside it. He had already prepared a cabin for me, which was beautifully decorated with red roses. So Grandpa told you that I am joining back? I asked. No, he didn't I have told you before that I will wait for you today whatever your decision will be. This man is impressing me again and again. Back to life. Rose's POV. On the same day of joining the office, I went to meet Mrs. Collins with Fiona after the office. She was really happy to see me back. She was really furious at Ryan and wanted to spank his butt. When she got to know how he came to the orphanage and convinced me to come back with him, her anger lessened. She wanted me to accept Ryan and give him a chance. 
I told her about my condition and how Ryan is helping me. She wished me luck to find my family soon. It's been a week since I joined Ryan's CEO team. It's not like that three months I spent as a trainee at the marketing department. I was glad to meet Kelly being on the same team. She wanted to know where I went for two weeks. I couldn't lie because I am not fond of lies. I told her the half-truth that I went back to the orphanage where I was brought up. I also told her how I misunderstood the orphanage officials five years back, and also that I ran away from the orphanage. She was surprised to know that I had such a past. She also felt proud of how I achieved my success with hard work and dedication. New designer collection is going to be launched in one month by Dumont Fashion. Fiona is now working under Megan for the big launch. Megan came and met on the first day itself and told how happy she was for me and Ryan. She too welcomed me to the Dumont family. We had to work last weekend. Ryan was absent for a few days when he came to Arizona to meet me. The works were piling over as it's new to all of us and again Martin is also on leave. Kelly and the other experienced employees in the team guided us and we were able to make up for the days absent within one week. It's Friday and Martin is coming back from New York by night's flight. Ryan's father is getting well faster and so his mother could handle alone there in New York. Grandpa and Grandma are going with Megan to meet Ryan's father, as it's the weekend. Ryan couldn't go as he had an important meeting with a client. We went to receive Martin at the airport with Helen. Helen was super excited to meet Martin. She even prepared a homely meal for the first time to welcome Martin. She had packed everything and kept it in the car, so that she could give it to Martin before he went to his apartment. We had reached the airport before Ryan. He reached just before Martin came out. Martin looked different with the beard and messy hair. Hello, honey. He came and hugged Helen. I missed you. Helen said. I missed you too, sweetheart. He kissed her forehead and then came to us. I missed you all. How is it going at the office? He asked. We just made up for your absence. I'm glad that you are back. We can now have a boys hangout on the weekends. Ryan said. Ryan, he needs rest for a few more days. Let him rest for the weekend. Helen will take care of him. I said pulling Ryan away from Martin. Okay then you can give me the company. He said pulling me closer to him. You better handle the meeting with the client. Grandpa asked me to remind you that he is an important client. I said taking his hand away from my shoulder. Okay, madam, I will take care of the client. So, Helen, are you going with Martin? He asked and Helen blushed. No, he needs rest. Honey, I will come in the morning. I have brought dinner for you. You need homely food. Don't order anything from outside. She said, hugging him. After Helen gave the dinner she brought for Martin, we went back to the apartment. The renovation works are progressing. The only work left is installing a door to the washroom and buying a new bed and wardrobe. Helen had already booked a bed, which will be delivered tomorrow. After the renovation, Fiona and I decided to go and buy a new wardrobe. We had dinner and went to bed early. Next day I woke up with a sweet aroma of pancakes. I quickly did my morning rituals and went out to see Helen preparing breakfast. She had almost done everything and was packing some in a lunchbox. Are you going to Martin's apartment? I asked. Yeah, he will be hungry. He needs healthy food. She replied. Helen. He didn't have any surgery it was just a needle, which was used to take the bone marrow. I agree that it would have been painful, but that doesn't mean he is weak only 1-5% to 5 of stem cells are being extracted, 
and it doesn't cause any harm to the donor the stem cells will be restored within a few weeks or months. I am not saying that he doesn't need care what he needs is not holy food but your presence. Be with him, because it was clear how much he missed you from the way he looked at you. Last night he actually longed for you. If you could be with him for the weekend. I said, are you serious? You mean that a bone marrow transplant is not a surgery? She asked. Yes, it's not a surgery. I too didn't know anything about it until Ryan told me. After that I searched on the internet and learned everything about it. I said, that mean Mr. Dumont didn't go through any surgery. She asked again. Yes, Mr. Dumont didn't go through a surgery. The stem cells were injected into his body. But he will need time to recover. His body will take time to accept the new stem cells, and there may arise complications. He will have to stay at the hospital for at least a month or two. I explained. Then what do you think? Should I take these pancakes or not? She asked. Of course you should take them. You have made those with so much love and care especially for Martin. He will be really happy to see these pancakes. I said, after packing everything in a lunchbox, Helen hurried to her room to get ready. By the time she and Fiona came out, I brewed some coffee. Helen came and took the lunchbox and said goodbye. Are you not having breakfast? Fiona asked. I have packed for me, too I will have it with Martin. She said before closing the door behind her. I served the coffee in two cups and came to the table. Fiona had already served pancakes on two plates. I squeezed the chocolate spread over it, while Fiona poured the maple syrup over her pancakes. We were halfway through our breakfast when the calling bell rang. I went and opened the door. The renovation. Workers were here to finish their work. They started their work straight away and within two hours finished their job. Fiona and I had agreed to take the expenses equally. For now Fiona will be paying. But when she asked them about the payment they said, We have got our full payment in advance. Who paid you? I asked. Mr. Dumont. He replied and went out. What are we going to do now? Let's repay him. I said, I don't think he will accept it anyways, it's just like a droplet of water from the vast ocean, let's get ready and go to buy a new wardrobe. Fiona said excitedly, I will just clean the dishes by the time you get ready. I said walking to the kitchen, I will help you with the cleaning. She started to clean the table and the kitchen counter. Within an hour, we left for shopping in Fiona's car. She took the car straight to a furniture shop. After searching around four shops, we got the exact wardrobe we were searching for. It's perfect for my new room. It is spacious from inside and will be definitely enough for my belongings. We gave them the address and they promised to deliver it by evening. The bed Helen had booked will also be arriving by evening. I looked at the watch and it's just 30 minutes past 1 o'clock. There is plenty of time. Let's have lunch. I said. Great. Let's have some seafood. A new seafood restaurant was opened recently near the beach. Let's go there. Fiona said. I had heard about that restaurant and it's really expensive let's go to some other restaurant. I said, come on Rose, we seldom get such opportunities, don't worry about the money, let's enjoy our meal. She said pulling me with her to the car. Within 20 minutes she parked the car in front of the restaurant. One could just imagine how expensive the food will be just by seeing the restaurant. I don't think they would even allow us to enter. I didn't want to get embarrassed in front of others, and so I sat back in the car. Fiona pulled me out of the car and literally dragged me inside the restaurant. 
The staff were looking at us, as if we were beggars. But it didn't distract Fiona. She went straight and sat on one of the tables. I didn't have any choice except to follow her. She ordered seafood I had never heard of, seen or tasted. Oysters were served along with other seafood. I didn't have any idea how to eat it and Fiona helped me. For the first time in my life, I tasted so many types of seafood. I hope Fiona won't be shocked after getting the bill. Instead of Fiona, I was the one who got shocked to see the bill. It's more than my two months salary. Fiona paid without any hesitation. Fiona, it was more than your two months salary. I said, I know but I wanted to celebrate my father has doubled the amount he used to send to my account. This bill has nothing in front of it. We were in the car when we received the call from Helen. She informed us that the bed is already on the way and we have to be at the apartment to receive it. We made it in time to receive the bed. By the time we set the bed in the room, two men came with the wardrobe. They helped us to keep it inside the room. By seven in the evening, my new room was ready for use. Match found. Rose's POV. After two weeks, Ryan informed me that my DNA results had come and they had already started the search for a perfect match. Just the thought of getting my family back makes me happy. I had shifted to my new room, and each morning, I really enjoyed the sunrise through my window. It's actually not a window. They have just installed a glass wall in the balcony, through which I could see the outside view, but can't see anything from outside. It's really hot inside the room during the daytime, but it's chilling during the night. Helen stayed at Martin's apartment during the last weekend. We advised her to move in with him, but she was adamant on her decision. She will think about moving in with him, only when he proposes to her. I hope that happens soon. My life is back on track, and I love the lovely people around me. They make me feel special. Each day of my life is filled with joy and happiness. I love my work and most importantly I am really grateful to Ryan for bringing me back. It's going to be a month and the prestigious launch of the new designer collection of the Dumont fashions is going to be held in four days. Fiona and Megan head on heels behind the event. It's really important for both of them as it's their first ever project. Ryan had given me permission to join Megan until the launch. That means I will have to work day and night without any rest. But I don't care about that because I love everything related to Dumont Enterprise. This company has given me a new life, and if all goes well I will get my family back with their help. I will always be obliged to the Dumont family for what they have done for me. They all have a generous heart that they accepted an orphan like me into their family. But my inner self wants to prove to the world that I am not an orphan. Until then I can't accept Ryan's feelings. I do have feelings for him. But I will accept it once he succeeds to find my family. I know I am being selfish. But if it brings my family to me, then I am ready to be selfish. I joined Megan on Monday. The grand launch is on Friday, and it's been heard that Dickens Corporation are also launching their new designer collection on the same day. The rivalry of the two companies are on headlines every other day. Even though the owners of the companies had never indulged in direct fighting, they kept a close watch on each other. They try to be better than the other. As far as I have known from Helen, the Dickens Corporation is handled by Reynold Dickens and his two sons. They have been in the fashion industry for the last 20 years. Personally, I like their designs, but hope that Dumont Fashions beat them this time. I haven't been to Megan's office yet and so got confused with the floor.
I had to call Fiona to know the exact floor. Welcome to the vice president's office. Megan welcomed me. I thanked her and looked around to find Fiona, but couldn't find her anywhere. Fiona is not here. She is at the Dumont Fashion Office, which is on the fifth floor. I came here to sign some documents. Ryan had told me that you will be helping us until the launch. You can come with me to the fashion office when I go there. Please be seated until I finish these documents. Megan said, pointing at the chair in front of her. Within half an hour we went to the fifth floor. I could hear Fiona's voice as soon as I stepped out of the elevator. She is shouting at someone. Why is she so angry? I wondered. Megan took me directly to a big hall with a big mirror on one of the walls. It's actually a rehearsal hall for the models. Models were walking one after another in front of the mirror. I have already told everyone that you have to give a bold look on your face and walk elegantly. Fiona shouted again. Madam, we all are experienced models and have done such ramp walks before. If you are not getting what you want, why don't you show us what you want? One of the models said to Fiona. Megan was about to snap her when I stopped her. Let's see what Fiona is going to do. Suddenly Fiona came forward and started to walk the way she wanted the models to walk. Each step she took talked about elegance, but her face showed boldness making it perfect for the look of a working mom. The entire theme of the launch is based on working mothers. It's actually a tribute to motherhood. The collection is going to have both formal and casual wear. The models were actually shocked to see Fiona walking so gracefully without any fear. Suddenly Megan pulled me out and took me to a corner. Rose, I need your help. She said. What help? I asked. You just saw how gracefully she walked. That's exactly what we want for our showstopper Fiona is not going to accept. If I ask her to be the showstopper directly, I know that she can never deny you. Please help. I want her as the showstopper. Megan put me in a difficult situation. I don't think she will agree she never had done modeling before. I said, but we could at least try. Megan said and I agreed. I don't know how I am going to do that. I will have to ask Martin and Ryan to help me. I was lost in my thoughts when Fiona came out. Hey, where are you lost? I was just shocked to see you handling everything so well you really gave a good snap to that model. I said. So, you were watching me. She asked and I just smiled. Come let's have coffee I am really exhausted. She said pulling me with her. Fiona, why don't you try modeling? I asked while taking the cup from her. Are you kidding me? Look at me. I don't have anything a model should have. She said. But you did great there. I tried to motivate her. Walking inside a room and walking on a ramp are two different things. She said. But if the company wants you to walk for the launch, would you do that? I asked. Did someone say anything? She asked. Actually Megan was with me when you were showing the models how to walk. She was really impressed and asked me to convince you to become the showstopper. She was about to drop the cup in her hand and I caught it in time. Is she out of her mind? How could she even think about that? I am nothing in front of those top models. She said. But you have the grace that none of the models have. We want the same look. Megan said from behind. Megan, if you don't stop, I am quitting. Fiona walked away from there. Don't worry, I will try to convince her. I said going behind Fiona. On the way I messaged Ryan and Martin about the issue and also to meet us for lunch. I didn't say anything to Fiona until lunchtime. I just helped her. 
At lunchtime, we went to our usual restaurant, where Ryan and Martin were already waiting. We ordered our lunch in that time. We all tried to convince Fiona. She was adamant on her decision. That's when I used an emotional blackmail technique. I literally cried in front of her saying that I don't mean anything to her or else. She would have agreed to my wish. Finally she had to agree to become the showstopper. It's Thursday and we were in the last minute of preparation. Fiona managed everything very well together with the ramp walk. I was in in charge of checking the arrangements at the venue of the launch. Ryan came forward to help me, and so we were at the venue checking all the preparations. That's when Ryan received a call. His expression changed as he continued to talk on the phone. Finally, he turned to face me. I have good news for you. It was the doctor and he called to inform them that they found a perfect match for your DNA. It felt as if the whole venue was turning around me. I hold on Ryan for support. Who are they? I asked. I don't know actually they want to keep it a secret. They first want to confirm that you are their daughter. I too think the same. We should be sure before meeting them. Ryan said. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go and confirm it right now. I said. Rose, they needed your sample to confirm and as you know it takes time for the results. You will have to wait for a few more days. For now, let's just concentrate on the event. Ryan said and I agreed. Tomorrow is the big day and Fiona is super nervous. I took her out for a walk but she was still lost in her thoughts. To distract her from her thoughts, I told her about finding a match for the DNA sample. She was really happy for me and wished that I get my family back. Least did I knew that it's going to change my life entirely. Next day, the launching event went very well and received a lot of appraisal. The media were talking about the new show Stopper. Fiona became famous overnight. For the first time, the designs of Dumont fashions beat that of the Dickens design. Waiting. Rose's POV. The success of the launch was all over the tabloids, especially Fiona got huge appraisal. A success party was arranged the very next day, which is Saturday, exclusively for the employees of the Dumont fashions, at one of the prestigious hotels of the town. I was also invited as I had been involved in the last-minute preparations of the launch. Ryan was coming as the CEO of the Dumont Enterprise to the party for just some time. He had plans with Martin as Martin was not invited to the party. Helen was going to her parents' place and will be spending the weekend with them. So Fiona and I will be alone at the apartment. We got up late as last night we came late. Both of us felt really tired because we didn't feel like making anything for breakfast. I checked the box of corn flakes and there was just a little left. I put it in a bowl and poured the milk over it. It was hardly enough for a single person. I searched the refrigerator and found leftover spaghetti, which will be enough for a person. I quickly heated it up and served it on a plate. Fiona came out at the same moment. I poured juice into two glasses and came to the table. What would you like to have cornflakes or spaghetti? I asked, sitting opposite to her. Why spaghetti? We both could have cornflakes. She asked. There were just a few cornflakes left. So I just heated up the leftover spaghetti. I don't want to do anything right now. I said. Okay then, let's share both. She suggested taking another spoon and fork from the table. We first shared the spaghetti and then had the cornflakes. We didn't want to do anything but still we had to because we were planning to go on a picnic tomorrow. Both of us had to do laundry as we haven't done it in a week. 
After breakfast, I put the clothes in the machine, while Fiona did the cleaning. Within an hour, we finished work and sat in front of the TV. We decided to order lunch, and that's when Ryan called me. Hello, Ryan. Rose, are you and Fiona free right now? He asked. Yes, we are free. I replied. Great, then be ready. Megan will be there to pick you up in a short while. He said. But where are we going? I asked. I will tell you everything later just be ready in half an hour. He said and ended the call. What did he say? Fiona asked. He said that Megan is coming to pick us and we have to get ready in half an hour. I said. Where are we going? She asked again. He said that he will tell us later. Let's go and get ready. I said, can't we skip? I just want to sit and watch the television. Fiona said, making a puppy face. Then call Ryan and tell him. I said before going into my room. Fiona had already changed when I came out. Didn't you call Ryan? I asked. Yes, I did, and he requested my help. You know I can't refuse anyone when they ask for help. She smirked and I doubted her intentions. Are they planning something? Fiona, tell me the truth. What's going on or else I am not coming? I warned her. Ryan said he will call you. He just gave me a hint that he is planning something for Megan. She said and a message popped up on my phone. It was a message from Ryan. I want you to keep Megan busy for at least two hours. Don't let her have lunch. I told her that you both are going to a spa. Just go and relax. I am sending you some money. Don't hesitate to use it. You can pay me back when you have it. I smiled reading his message. I showed the message to Fiona, and she was super excited to know that we are going to a spa. As winter days are coming, the temperature is dropping down. Nowadays, I try to avoid shorter and thinner dresses. It's unpredictable when it will get colder. Megan called us when she reached down. We quickly got out and went down. Megan was furious that we didn't tell her about going to the spa. She took us to one of the expensive spas in the city. We spent two hours in the spa. Megan was about to pay for all of us, but I refused. I had already checked the balance and so paid for mine and Fiona. I am starving, let's have lunch. Megan walked forward. I looked at Fiona and looked at me back. Call Ryan quickly. Fiona said before going behind Megan. I took the phone and dialed Ryan's number. Ryan. We are finished and Megan wants to have lunch. I said without waiting for him. Don't worry, I will call her. He said before ending the call. Megan was on the verge of crying when I reached the car. I looked from Megan to Fiona. What happened? I asked. Something happened to Grandpa. I have to hurry back to the bungalow. She said. Megan, I'll drive the car. Fiona said, getting in the driver's seat. We were outside the Dumont bungalow within half an hour. Megan jumped out of the car before it even stopped. I feared if something really bad happened to Grandpa or not. I and Fiona followed Megan inside the bungalow. It's the first time I am coming to the bungalow. It's really huge, like a mini palace. Fiona had come here before with Megan. Suddenly we heard Megan scream. Both of us ran inside the building to find the entire Dumont family in the hall. Ryan's parents stood in front of Megan. I am proud of you, my princess. You proved that you are capable of taking the responsibility. Ryan's father said. Why didn't you tell me that you are coming? Megan asked. We want to surprise you and so Ryan made the plan. Her mother said, so Rose and Fiona were in your plan. Megan turned to us. That's when others noticed us at the entrance. Megan, 
We didn't know about the surprise, Ryan. Just asked to keep you busy for some time, and it was all his plan. I said, Welcome to the Dumont family, my dear. Ryan's mother came to me and welcomed me. She took us inside. We can talk after lunch, Grandma said, leading us to the dining table. A delicious feast was arranged on the table. Two maids served the food and that's when I noticed that Ryan's father was just having a bowl of soup. Seeing my concern for his mother, Paul is on a diet. He can't have normal food for some time. Rose, my dear girl, don't kill your appetite because of me I have eaten all these foods throughout my life. Now it's time to give my stomach some rest enjoy your food and don't worry about me. Ryan's father said. After lunch, Megan took Fiona to her room and left me alone with Ryan. Come, let me show you my house, he said taking my hand. She gave me a tour of the bungalow and at last took me to his room. I was already inside the room admiring the beauty when I heard the door lock. I turned around to see Ryan hanging the key on the key holder. He slowly walked towards me, and I backed away until my back hit the wall. I searched around for a way to escape. He came closer and trapped me between him and the wall. He was so close that I could feel his cologne. His breath fanned my face. I closed my eyes as my breathing fastened. I could feel his hands on me. It snaked through my back and rested on my hips. Suddenly, he pulled me to him, making me open my eyes. His lips brushed mine making me want more. He waited as if asking my permission. My lips trembled but found its way to him. He took the lead and devoured my lips. He asked permission to enter and I gave in. We parted when we were both breathless. I could feel myself being wet. I feared that if I stayed longer I would give myself to him. I pushed him and ran towards the door. I grabbed the key and opened the door before he could catch me. I didn't wait to say goodbye to anyone. I just dragged Fiona from Megan's room and went out. To my surprise, Ryan had already told the driver to take us back to the apartment. Fiona didn't ask anything as I know that she would have understood from my swollen lips. We got ready by seven and left for the hotel in Fiona's car. At the party I tried to avoid Ryan. He came early and will be leaving soon. I was enjoying my wine when Ryan came to me. Rose, I need to talk to you in private. He said and walked to the balcony. I followed him silently. I have good news for you our doctor called me earlier and said that the people whose DNA matched yours wanted to meet you. I think they have done the test and most probably it matched, but we can't be sure we haven't disclosed any of your details, including your name. They want to meet you alone. Please don't tell them your name. Before they identify you don't get tense. I am always with you. Ryan said, hugging me. An unknown fear ran through me, meeting the family. Rose's POV. I couldn't enjoy the rest of the party. Finally I am going to live my dream. There are just a few hours left before I meet my family. I hope they recognize me. I have changed a lot in the last 15 years. The change from 5-year-old Rose to 21-year me is not definable. I don't know who all are coming. Is it my parents or just my siblings? Do I even have a sibling? Are my parents alive? Did they search for me? I don't have the answer to any of the questions. Fiona came to me after she noticed my change. When she got to know that tomorrow I am going to meet the people whose DNA matched mine, she offered to go back to the apartment. But I didn't want to make Megan sad, and so I stayed. It was already 30 minutes past 11 when we returned back to the apartment. As soon as we got inside the car, we wore our jackets. 
We have kept our jackets in the car, as we know that it's going to get colder in the night. Fiona started the engine and drove towards the apartment. I was lost in my own thoughts that I didn't hear Fiona's voice. She tapped me on the lap, pulling me out of my thoughts. Are you all right, Rose? She asked. Yes, I am all right. I was just lost in my thoughts. I said, Would you mind sharing your thoughts with me? She asked, taking her eyes off the road and looking at me. I was just thinking about tomorrow's meeting. Will they be my real family? Will they accept me? Will they recognize me? I don't know anything and so I am worried what if they are not my family? If they are my family, then will I be able to accept them? I am really confused, Fiona. I opened up. I know you are tense and I have an idea to ease your tension. Let's have some beer. Fiona said. Not at all, Fiona. I never had one before. I refused. It's just beer and it will help you both to fight your anxiety and the cold. She insisted and finally I agreed. Can we get the canned beer? We can drink at the apartment. I asked. That will do. She said and stopped the car in front of a late night supermarket. I was about to get down when she stopped me and said that she will go and get it. She came back within seven minutes. She had a carton of canned beer in her hands. I never had the chance to drink beer or wine. Even after getting the job, I never felt the need to drink. But today I felt really weak. You said we will just have one can. Then why did you buy a complete carton? I asked. It's for me you will be moving out if you get your family back. I will be all alone whenever Helen is not there. I can have this and chill at that time. She said and clearly understood the sadness in her voice. I know she is happy for me, but she is the one who is going to suffer the most after I go. I didn't have any reply but I promised to myself that I will never allow her to feel lonely. At the apartment, we first went and changed, and then sat on the couch in the living area. Fiona put a movie on Netflix, and we started to watch it while having a beer. The moment the liquid touched my tongue, I felt like spitting it out. Fiona was watching me, and so I gulped it. Once my mouth became familiar with the taste, it felt good. I started to feel dizzy after drinking only half of it. My inner self prompted me to drink it full. I just needed to forget everything. So I finished the rest in one go. Okay, Fiona, I am going to bed. Good night. I said and tried to stand up but failed. I will help you. Fiona came to help me. Don't worry, you will be all right in the morning. You are feeling dizzy because it's your first time. She tried to convince me. She took me to my room and helped me get on my bed. She went out after tucking me inside the blanket. I soon drifted into a deep sleep. Next morning I woke up with a searing pain in my head. I couldn't even open my eyes. That's when Fiona came in through the door. She was holding a tray in her hand. Good morning, here is the medicine for your headache and a hot black coffee. Have it and you will feel better, she said placing the tray on the side table. For the first time sunlight, coming through the window, felt annoying. Fiona please put on the curtains, I asked, looking at her retreating figure. She did as I asked and went out. Somehow I got out of the bed and dragged myself to the washroom. After doing my morning rituals, I came back and took the medicine. Then I went out with the cup of coffee and had it sitting on the couch. I saw Fiona making some breakfast in the kitchen. The coffee made me feel better. That's when I saw my phone on the couch. I took it, and there are a dozen missed calls and messages from Ryan. I had put it in silent mode last night. I opened one of the messages. Where are you, Rose? 
Are you fine? Do you need me? I looked at the time and it's 30 minutes past 9. Ryan had made the calls and sent the messages an hour before. Fiona, did Ryan call you? I asked. Yes, he was worried about you. I told him that you were sleeping. He asked me to tea. Asked you to call him back once you wake up. I quickly called him. Hello my dear, how are you? He asked soon as he took the call. I am fine Ryan why did you call me? I asked. Be ready by 11. We are going to meet the family at the hospital. I will come and pick you up. He said, making me sigh. I will have to face this. It was my decision to find them, and when they are so close, I am freaking out. I should be happy at this time, but I feel very uneasy. Fiona called me to have breakfast, but I didn't feel like having it. At the same time, I didn't want to make Fiona sad. She is doing so much for me. I got up and went to the dining table, where she had already arranged everything. I sat across from her and silently ate the bacon and scrambled egg. She waited until I finished my food. Now go and get ready. Everything will be fine. I will pray for you. She knew that I was going to meet them, but still was silent, just to make me eat. I am really lucky to have a friend like her. For the first time in my life, I stood in front of my wardrobe, confused about what to wear. It is going to be my first meeting with my family. I should look good. At last I chose blue jeans and a white shirt. Then I went and took a warm shower to ease my throbbing muscles. I got changed after drying my hair. I look at myself in the mirror. It felt like I was missing something. I checked everything but still wasn't satisfied. That's when Fiona came in. Why are you taking so long? It's already 30 minutes past 10 and Ryan has been waiting for you since the last 10 minutes. Am I looking good? I asked. When did you start to worry about your looks? She asked me back. Rose, you always look good. You don't have to do anything it's just your mind that's playing with you just be yourself. And don't worry Ryan is with you just remember that whatever happens we are with you. She comforted me. I left with Ryan after saying goodbye to Fiona. In the car Ryan told me. Rose, they want to meet you alone. They are not even ready to disclose their identity. Just be calm and remember that I am in the next room. You don't have to worry about anything. If you feel uncomfortable, just give me a call. We had reached the hospital. It's not the hospital where we went last time to give the DNA samples. Ryan, this is not your family hospital. I asked. I told you they don't want to reveal their identity. They wanted somewhere they were comfortable. They first wanted to meet you at a hotel, but I refused. I said that we too have to confirm that their DNA matches yours. He said. We walked inside the hospital where his family doctor welcomed us. He took us straight to a private room. Mr. Dumont, Rose will have to wait here. We can wait in the other room. Doctor said, making me startled. Don't worry. I am just a call away, Ryan said before going out. I looked around the room. It looked like a waiting area. There were couches and chairs arranged neatly around the room. I went and sat on a chair and waited. Suddenly the door to the room opened and in came a lady in her late forties and a man in his fifties. The lady seemed familiar because she looked somewhat like me or the vice versa. I saw her lips trembling and saying something inaudible to the man. He too was looking at me with shining eyes. I know those eyes. It's just like the one I have, small green eyes with thick lashes. Two other men entered the room and they too looked at me with lots of emotions. 
I stood up and she came running to me saying something and this time I heard it clearly. I heard my own name slip from her mouth. She hugged me and called and this time more clearly. Rose.